Welcome back to part whatever it is of the third gen Firebird Vortec 4.2 liter swap. Today is time to paint, 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 prep and paint the engine bay. I've just been kind of doing some wire loom stuff. I've got like the whole wiring harness that goes around to the headlights pulled back and out. Um, another thing I found is the engine wiring harness at least most of the engine wiring harness comes down to this plug through the frame. So I can just completely remove that. I don't think I'll ever need it ever again because obviously much different motor. I think that just goes to the ECU. There might be a few things I'll need from this. So I'm going to keep it and hold on to it just in case. And there's probably a few engine related things on the other harness, but regardless, uh, here's like a main disconnect for the rest of the wiring harness here. Working, I've got like some brake lines moved. I've got, I'm getting the speedometer cable out. The hood latch cable broke. It was already breaking, but it finally broke. So I need to get a new one of those and also get that one pulled out. Point is I'm doing a lot of just getting stuff pulled out. I gotta remove this, gotta remove this thingy over here. But uh, long story short is GM actually made the wiring harness on this fairly easy to remove, which is very convenient for me. And it should make, and it seems like the, uh, the engine harness is much more separated from the body harness. Unlike the Z31, that was all integrated all together. So thank you, Nissan, for that. But GM appears to have been doing a fairly decent job at separating the harnesses for the most part. It's not perfect. There's a few little odds and ends here that are kind of weirdly mixed, like the RPM gate. Like some of the distributor stuff is on the main harness. I don't think there's anything for the body on the engine harness, though, which is convenient. Long story short is I'm getting this stuff pulled. I'm going to get the speedometer cable out next time you see me we will be prepping for paint. All right, it's been about maybe an hour and a half, two hours, and I have gotten so much stuff removed. I've got the whole main harness pulled, the engine harness I got out. You gotta, um, I had to, here, let me show you. You see, big harness is gone. I had to unplug it from the ECU somewhere up in there. I think you may have seen it. Uh, I also had to pull the gauge cluster to get the speedometer cable out. The next step is going to be to start sanding it or like wire brushing it. I do have that paint stripper. I don't know if I'm gonna use it or not because I feel like it would take way too much to do this whole thing. So I may just hang on to it for future projects. But I think, another concern, this rust area. Now, this is where the battery tray is obviously. It's actually very structural rust. So what I might do, clean it up and then use some rust converting like primer or something that converts rust into a non-corrosive metal. Maybe, I don't know. In theory, the right thing to do is to cut it all out and replace it. I don't want to do that. And this car is not, this, this, this doesn't need to be perfect. There is like a little bit down along there that's kind of rusty. And there's a few areas where there's some surface rust on the firewall and stuff and like down in there. But I think our goal is just to get it close enough. I mean, after all this, and then the thing about this car is going to be perfect. It's actually a fairly clean car for an 85 that sat in the field for 20 years. I'm getting sidetracked. Point is, I'm going to start just sanding all this down, getting it knocked down to the point where I can put on primer and stuff. The, uh, the first thing we're going to paint is like basically all of the uh, upper half of the firewall and the engine bay and stuff. And once we get to the firewall, then I'll jack the car up and do the transmission tunnel with some like undercoating just to protect it. And then after that, I don't know, we'll go from there. So when you see me next, we'll probably, I'll probably just do a quick overview of all the sanding I've done when I come back. And then after that, we'll start painting. So see you then. All right, so I've been working on prepping it for the car for paint. And basically, even after scuffing everything up, the, uh, the paint stripper still isn't working. And instead of wasting a $20 can of paint stripper, I'm just gonna save it for a future project. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get everything cleaned and kind of roughened up as best I can. And then I've got some primer, some rust reforming primer that converts rust and some regular matte back black paint and also some undercoating that we will be using for under the frame rails and the transmission tunnel and whatnot. So, but I mean, I did get like, you know, these dirty areas cleaned up. So the rust, and it's been etched. So the, 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 the paint should stick pretty good. But I'm gonna start just by like kind of throwing some of this rust converting primer on in a few spots, like the battery tray where it's really rusty, and then go from there. 
the uh, the video is probably just gonna be kind of cut between me showing different areas painted and then we'll do a before and after afterwards so anyway yeah i'm gonna do this now all right so we're doing a bit of a test patch here on the battery and obviously you can still tell that uh it is rust due to the you know cancerous look of it however this primer converts it into a non-corrosive metal and so with the battery and stuff all up in there it should look good but uh it's hard to see anything but you can see kind of where the division is right now obviously this whole engine bay is going to be matte black but i'm just doing a bit of a test patch right here just to kind of get the rusted areas covered but i think it should look pretty good so i'm going to kind of just start going through doing all this and i'll just kind of update you guys along the way so just kind of laying down some more uh test patches and as you can see got this other side done also all up along that seam there and uh definitely think this should work pretty decently but obviously still a lot more that needs to be done but i don't have to get a lot more of this stuff and it's expensive so that's nice but i don't know if i'm going to be doing this for the whole thing or if I'm just going to do the more kind of rusty spots, I don't really know yet. I kind of want to just do the whole thing with it just to be safe, but it's also expensive. So I might do kind of some half and half here and there of the rust stuff in the rusty areas and then just regular matte black in other areas. I don't know yet, but maybe I'll do a quick test to kind of see how they blend together and go from there. All right, so quick update. Uh, so I basically, what I did for this whole section here is I sprayed the rust converting primer on the areas that were rusted and then just did the rest with the regular matte black paint. And I think that's what the, what I'm gonna do, just cause the matte, back, the matte black paint is cheap. The rust converting stuff isn't as cheap. It's like double the price. So I'm gonna go through and like paint all the rust areas with the rust converting stuff and then do the regular matte black on top of it. And then I'm basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of go from here, kind of do this right side and then kind of work around and just kind of work in a circle maybe, or maybe I'll kind of go back and forth like I tend to do. And then once this whole upper half is painted, we can do the undercoating, which I also have on the frame rails and stuff. So, and I like got the subframe and whatnot, just so it's all nice and clean looking. So, you know, I'm gonna just kind of start getting a lot of painting done because it's not gonna be very interesting for the video. So I'm sure you guys probably don't mind. So when you come back, I'll, I'll do another update at some point. All right, so it's been a minute, but uh, so far I've gotten everything from the bottom of the frame rails up painted. Now it does look uneven right now, A, because lighting and B, half of it's still wet, because I've been doing this, I just came up here to finish it today. But um, I've still got to do this back section here, but I'm not too worried about that. But besides that, everything on the outside is good and Smells gross. Alrighty, so here is the mostly finished product. Uh, obviously there's still some more areas that need to be painted underneath, but I can get to those later. But overall, I'll also still need to get back there. But for the purposes of getting the transmission and the engine in, it'll work great. So that's gonna be doing it for this video. Next time we will be getting the transmission in, fingers crossed, I don't know why we wouldn't be able to, but if you did enjoy this video, remember to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, see you guys next time.